Feels great, man. Feels great. First, first year, first winners. Amazing, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The curtain has closed on the inaugural season of Major League Cricket. 60 of America's best had their chance to shine alongside the top cricketers in the world. And now the stage is set for Minor League Cricket. 26 teams coast to coast will compete for the T20 National Championship. Let's see who can emerge as the next star of American Cricket. Week one saw plenty of surprises and big plays. Let's start with the East, where the New Jersey Stallions suffered a major setback in their quest to return to the finals weekend for the third straight year, losing to Manhattan Yorkers and the Philadelphians. Ryan Scott found immediate success with his new team, scoring 51 from 27 on a tricky wicket at Mercy County Park to lead Philly to an easy victory. Somerset Cavaliers got off to a great start to move to 1-0, giving the Yorkers a split on the weekend. Chandra Paul Hemraj scored 56 from 50, and the Cavaliers took 9 wickets en route to a comfortable 51-run victory. Rain meant that both Philly and Somerset were limited to one game each over the first weekend. In the South, Baltimore and Morrisville split a two-game series at Church Street Park. Trayvon Griffith starred for the Raptors with a pair of half-centuries, carrying his bat on Sunday not out with 77 runs. In the Central, the Chicago Tigers welcomed the Chicago Kingsmen to the league with a comfortable victory in what promises to be a heated rivalry. Calvin Savage took three wickets and Cody Chetty scored 51 from 44 to help the Tigers retain bragging rights in the Windy City. Coming up, we've got Joe Hickey to cover the West, but first let's look at this week's standouts. The emerging player of the week for week one is 20-year-old Ayan Desai, who took five wickets in 15 overs for the Lashings to help his team to 2-1, including an upset over Silicon Valley strikers. And let's move on to the Atlantic Conference top performers for week one. Trayvon Griffith wins top batter with his league-leading 129 runs at a strike rate of 143. There's some stiff competition at the Atlantic for top bowler of week one, but Minaj Acharya gets the edge, taking three wickets in eight overs at an economy of 3.38. But it's his league leading 31 dots that separate him from the pack. Moving on to Pacific Conference top performers for week one, Reuben Clinton wins top batter with a Pacific leading 115 runs, pacing the lashings to their best start in minor league history. San Diego's Guyan Fernando took a whopping 10 wickets in three games, including back-to-back four-wicket hauls, and he claims the Pacific Top Bowler recognition. Congratulations, guys. Keep up the good work. So joining me now to discuss the West Division is West Zone correspondent Joe Hickey. Joe, thank you for joining us. It's been a really exciting weekend. There's been an emergence of a Southern California team that we're about to talk about here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming into the weekend, coming into the season for that matter, uh, Southern California teams were 2-31 and 31 all time against the Northern Cal sides. It's been a real split uh, in this Western division. And uh, we had right out of the gate an upset, the SoCal lashings, uh, taking care of business and beating the Silicon Valley strikers by 21 runs uh, on Sunday. A, a bit of a surprise development, although something that was kind of developing uh, over the course of the entire weekend. Yes, that is a bit of a surprise, but but at the same time, we've seen so we've seen the, the Silicon Valley Strikers team get shaken up quite a bit this this off season, um, losing their captain at the very least. Mm-hmm. Uh, though they did replace him with uh, Lahiru Malanta, well, or necessarily re- replace him, they did inherit uh, Lahiru uh, Malanta. But yeah, Reuben Clinton from SoCal Lashings, what a what a great job from him this weekend. The uh, American born. Uh, played a lot of cricket in in South Africa. Um, well, he's pretty much from there, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's this SoCal team looked going into the season, and I mentioned this, I believe, on the draft show that they look like a much better team this year. They rebranded a little bit with their with their aesthetic, with their team kits, and with their logo, um, and they look a lot a lot more polished on the field as well. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. There's some fielding issues in the first couple of games that made the San Diego one a little closer than it could have been and might have cost them the game against East Bay, but much better on Sunday against Silicon Valley. Uh, And Clinton in particular has been growing over the course of the weekend uh, out pretty early in the first game, but 45 against East Bay, 64 against uh, Silicon Valley strikers. And that showing on Sunday was particularly impressive because he really didn't have a steady partner uh, at the crease over the course of that 
that innings until Elmore Hutchinson came in uh, after they were already down five wickets. Uh, it's worth remembering Silicon Valley didn't bowl so badly in this one. They uh, had uh, SoCal at 81 for five with seven overs left, uh, but it was that 50, uh, 50 partnership for the sixth wicket uh, that uh, Clinton and Elmore Hutchinson put together uh, that really gave this uh, the air of something that might be defendable. And then on top of that, he demonstrated that he can bowl a little bit of off spin, uh, managed to take the wicket of Prane Suri during a mini collapse for Silicon Valley just after the power play ended. Um, and for that matter, was great in the field, taking catches all over the place. Um, he was responsible for the catches that brought uh, Nikhil Dutta's innings to an end on Friday and then Shahan Jayasuriya's innings to an end on Sunday. And both of those were kind of the death knells of those run chases. One, one of those players that at least this past weekend found a way to contribute in all facets of the game. You mentioned Elmore Hutchinson. What kind of that's that is a vintage Elmore Hutchinson innings there with the bat. Oh, yeah. How many times he has done that for USA in the past, you know, digging them out of a hole, you know, at the tail, you know, with USA, he batted towards the tail, but he won so many games for USA. Um, when they were in dire straits. Well, and it's so important too to get him with somebody who he can partner with so the bowler can't really focus on him. A lot of times the, the last couple seasons with uh, SoCal limping to 4-10 and 10 and 4-11 and 11 records, um, he's come in and batted with the tail chiefly. Um, sure. He's gotten the chance a couple times now to bat with one of the top order bats uh, and, and it really gives the bowler nowhere to hide. Uh, and uh, man, when, when Elmore hits them, they stay hit. Um, yeah. I got a chance to witness that last year when they took on East Bay up in Morgan Hill. And uh, he put a bit of a scare into us in a pretty close game that was maybe an indicator of what was starting to come for the SoCal side. Yeah, he absolutely swings a big stick. You know, Elmore, another one of those guys that finds a way to to contribute in every facet of the game. Yeah. And and you mentioned c contributing in all sorts of phases. He's also been part of the other big story. It's tempting to look at the run scoring for SoCal and get excited about that and uh, the work that you're getting from Ruben Clinton. But uh, the tone setter so far for this team has really been their power play bowling. Um, and they're taking a page out of Silicon Valley's book from last season using a double barrel left arm pace attack. They've got Elmore Hutchinson paired with the youngster Ian Desai. Uh, and it has been very effective. Their power play uh, uh, economy at the moment, 5.11, third best so far in minor league cricket. And that's facing teams like East Bay and Silicon Valley that are renowned for running it up early. Yes. And this is this is a trend in the USA cricket. This is something that everyone who follows cricket in USA knows. Left handed bowlers here do extremely well. I mean, disproportionately, they do well in all of T20 cricket. But here in the USA, and we saw this in minor league and major league as well. We saw this in mm -hmm. major league. We saw Sorab taking some incredibly huge wickets. I mean, probably the the the, the top two domestic bowlers, in my opinion, were were Sorab and and uh, and Noshkenjige, both left arm bowlers. We saw Harmit have a lot of success. Yes, he's a spinner, but the wickets, you know, here in the USA are helpful to a, to a lefty. And I think I think people see them just infrequently enough that. It, that they have that advantage going for them as well. But when you have a really quality left arm bowler like uh, like Sorab, and in this case, when you have a good youngster like Ian Desai, like this is this is a really big plus. And I don't, I, I would absolutely do exactly this. I would go, I would start my innings with two lefties, you know, in, <laughs> until it stops working. Oh, absolutely, and and Desai in particular. It's been enjoyable seeing the glow up so far this weekend. Obviously, small sample size, just three games so far. But, uh, you know, this kid was kind of thrown to the wolves with Hollywood Master Blasters last year. Sure. Uh, bowled, bowled 15 overs in the power play, took one wicket, gave up 118 runs. And that was his best economy in any phase. Hollywood yeah. just seemed to be a place where they, they weren't really getting uh, the best out of even promising players. Well, right. Um, Everybody we've seen that played there didn't perform. We Absolutely, very, very good players play there. Nisar Patel played there. Didn't ne ne never had good numbers there. Uh, yeah, Abhimanyu Rajap was telling me they've been just over the moon to be able to to give the first ball of the game to a local LA kid and get to see him excel like this. And they've been after him all three seasons, but he's been drafted by other squads. He's actually one of only a few players that has suited up for all three of the uh, Southern California teams. Um, but so far this year, seven overs, just 22 runs conceded inside the power play and three wickets taken. And what's been really impressive is just the composure the kids had. Uh, and on top of that, just the, the consistency with which he is bowling, he's getting prodigious swing 
which is impressive for 90 degree days in Van Nuys to be- manage to get the ball to move in the air much at all. Right. Um, and the commentators were saying they really felt like his pace was intimidating, uh, particularly to the surf riders uh, top order. Um, he was nailing Yorkers against the likes of Greg Hay, getting him to nick off behind. Um, he was toying with the newcomer Adit Gorawara, the Hong Kong international uh, that is now keeping wicket for San Diego. A couple of wide deliveries that uh, got him leaning out a little bit and then came right in with the sand shoe crusher, uh, hit him right on the toe and sent him packing. Uh, and then against Milantha, an absolute masterclass, uh, starts him with a leg stump Yorker. Milantha blocks that out because you can't do anything else fights off a ball on off stump, maybe just a little bit above the stumps, and then just pushes his length that bit deeper uh, to pick up the top of off stump on the third delivery and sends Melantha off with a debut that he'd probably prefer to forget. Right, right. And we we both know how prodigious uh, Lahiro Melantha is. He's very good. I mean, he, he led the South in, in runs last season. Him going to Silicon Valley Strikers was supposed to kind of offset the loss of, you know, the players that, they, that they've lost. So... <laughs> You know, that's that's very impressive. Those are some big wickets right there. Anytime you you can get a power play wickets with a youngster in minor league cricket, you're you're talking about things that that not many teams can can pull off. You're talking about you know Atlanta Fire stuff. You're talking about uh, last year's um uh, Seattle, how they are able mm-hmm. to get power play wickets with their youngster uh, up there. So that that gives your team a massive advantage when you when you have. We've talked so many times about this. When you have a U21 player who can give you plus uh, uh, contributions, oh yeah, sets your whole team up. You don't. You, now every, everything's everything works great now, and it gives you a massive advantage. So this is really big. I, I, I love the story of how they wanted to get him in, in the draft, and they missed out on him the last couple of seasons. The fact that he's that he's out there exposed to the draft just goes to you, goes to show you that you know not enough people believed in him. Or it seems that way. And now, you know, he's showing his, his worth. And, and, you know, obviously he's gotten much better since uh, since the U19 Nationals. Um, but that's what's going to happen. That's what we love to see in minor league cricket. We love to see young players like this emerge and, and you know, become stars. Well, and my day job is as a teacher. And so, yeah, growth mindset, I am all about getting to watch somebody blossom uh, out of seeming to have their talents wasted. It's it's maybe the best story you can be uh, that, that you can sit down and witness. And Desai just has an infectious joy when he's rolling, uh, even through watching it on a stream. Uh, you can feel what he's bringing to that team. And it, like I said, it's been a tone setter for them. Uh, and it's allowed them to reach this point ha- uh, here in the season two and one, uh, just barely behind East Bay on net run rate for first in the division. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, East Bay, that bowling attack that they have. Yeah, their batting looks a little bit weaker this year. They're missing Saeed Ganesh, and he was a big start starter for them, you know. No, absolutely. And uh, it was encouraging, I think, to see that the man who stepped in in the place of the uh, injured young wicketkeeper, Vikash Mohan, uh, into that opening role, he had a good weekend as well. Uh, 30 off 30 alongside David White uh, for a 77 run opening partnership in their first game. Uh, And then after White went a little cheaper than we're accustomed to, just one run run off seven against San Diego. Don't worry, that followed 68 off 52 against SoCal. White's fine. Uh, but yeah. uh, but uh, Vikash then partnering with the uh, the young captain, as it worked out, Sanjay Krishnamurthy, uh, for a th- uh, picked up 37 off 29 and really got uh, East Bay into a good position there. And with Vikash, it's been really exciting seeing the way that he started targeting some of the some really good spinners. Uh, took on Nisarg Patel, Marty Kane, Nikhil Dutta in that match against San Diego and uh, had 35 off 25 against those three bowlers, three fours, two sixes. Um, Last year, his bread and butter was attacking pace because by and large, he was a finisher. He was coming in for those last couple of overs uh, at the death and facing the fastest bowlers. Uh, It's nice to see a little more versatility from him, uh, knowing that he's going to be somebody trying to bat a bit longer, trying to eat into the innings uh, and build partnerships like he did this weekend. Who, who else are we seeing some uh, impressive stuff from? Uh, over with East Bay, you know, we mentioned David White more or less picking up where he left off, uh, save for a, a little blip in the second game, one off seven, but 68 runs in the opener. Uh, the other big one that I saw was a very late addition to the roster, uh, 37-year-old Pakistani medium pacer, uh, Musaddiq Ahmed. 
Uh, he definitely passed his audition against San Diego on Sunday. Uh, th- the first game, he just batted a little bit in the middle, um, didn't really get much of a sense of what he was capable of, but they bowled him uh, in the second game, took three wickets for just 11 runs in three overs. And it wasn't even just about quantity from him. It was the quality of batters he was getting. They were game-turning wickets, took out Marty Kane and Adit Gorawara when both of them were starting to really get rolling, uh, and then got Nisar Patel before he could get out of first gear. And all that came after he had hit a couple sixes off of Marty Kane in the final over of the first innings uh, to make that a bit more of a defendable total. Uh, ended up with 23 off 17, and for me, was the man of that match, uh, just contributing on both ends. A bit of a theme this week. He did a little bit of that. Rajap did a little bit in the first game of the week for uh, SoCal. Sure Nawaz did. Khan did it later, uh, or did it earlier, rather, for East Bay. Uh, there was a lot of that, you know, somebody coming in late overs, picking up some big runs, and then being really important with the ball, uh, either late in the piece or in the middle overs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You mentioned Rajap uh, with his contributions uh, earlier in the weekend. The lashings, their first victory, I think he had a very big game there. And speaking of uh, San Diego... Another st- rough start for them, but they did have a few bright spots. No, absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, the outing against SoCal wasn't a terrible one. Uh, in fact, that game was very much a winnable one uh, with five overs left. They needed 32 off 30 and just couldn't get across the line. Uh, that death bowling really coming through for the SoCal lashings. Abhimanyu Rajiv, we just talked about taking four wickets for six runs in his two overs. Um, for San Diego, the good stuff came about courtesy of Guy and Fernando, chiefly. Uh, looks like a high leverage weapon, uh, a bit cruelly coming over from the SoCal lashings um, and, and now working in San Diego. But uh, three for 29 so far in his six overs in the power play, five for 27 in the death overs. He's bowled five of those. Um, and he's been a big part of why San Diego, as they are still trying to restrain the run rate at the death where their economy has ballooned a little bit, uh, they do have the best strike rate as a bowling unit at the death right now, 7.5 balls per wicket, uh, topping everybody in minor league cricket in this opening weekend. Um, he went four for 21 overall in uh, both of the games against the the uh, Bay Area sides. And so he looks like a potential weapon. That's some battle tested uh, bowling from uh, from Gay and Fernando. Um, they're going to be happy to see Marty Kane and Nisar Patel excelling with the bat. They put on a nice partnership against SoCal that got them into that position for 69 runs. Um, and it actually gained Nisar Patel a promotion to opening the batting. Um, and then lastly, Chad Britsky, uh, down the order a little bit, uh, We wondered if his mashing in Nevada would translate to minor league cricket and a 32 off 18 against East Bay certainly indicates uh, that he might be able to handle things here. Uh, Had a couple nice partnerships with Abine Reddy uh, over the course of the weekend. Yes, you mentioned uh, Guyan Fernando taking three in the power play and five in the death. He also took two in the middle orders in the middle over stage stages of the game. So he's taking wickets in, in all stages that's great production from him. I love the Nassar Patel promotion to opening. I think that that's really good, especially in this league. You definitely want to have a good start. You know, obviously you want to have batting all the way through, but when you're when your team is kind of struggling, I, I think it's always a good idea to give your most experienced guys more balls to see. So what else are you seeing with this San Diego team? What's holding them back right now? Well, you mentioned the promotion of Nisarg Patel. That's a direct response to a continued problem with their top order batting. Uh, last year, they had a really tough time with it. Sri Krishna, uh, Anantharaju only reached 20 twice uh, over the course of the season and was out in single digits, seven of 14 matches. Um, Hay was a, Greg Hay was a little more consistent with a 39 average, but kind of slow, 116 strike rate, never really got out of first gear. Uh, Marty Kane, Kind of hit or miss, big scores, also tiny scores, and very itinerant. They're going to be excited to have a little more of him this season with uh, the T20 sure. uh, duties not coming up with the USA national team. Um, but starting this season, their top three so far uh, have had 86 runs scored off 91 balls. Uh, that is a 94.5 strike rate. That's a that's a great radio station and a terrible strike rate for your <laughs> opening batters. Uh, hey. They're averaging nine and a half runs a wicket at this point. And so they're just not getting what they need. Nisar Patel batted a little bit deeper today against Silicon Valley. But again, they just couldn't get the run rate amped up. Admittedly, you're facing the likes of Asarab Netravalkar, Ashrini Raghavan, who has absolutely uh, been stellar for the first couple of games of the season. Uh, but that is going to be a big part of what they need to do. They've got to accelerate a bit more at the start. Um, this reminds me a little bit of the discourse, uh, Nate, that you and I had about Golden State 
uh, before the draft, where uh, it's a team that does have a little bit of lumber lower in the order, potentially. Kane, Dutta, Britsky now. Uh, you wonder, you know, Nisard Patel moving up, that's a personnel change. How much do they just also need a little bit of an attitude adjustment to say, hey, we've got to express ourselves a little bit so that this pressure doesn't build uh, and we wind up leaving our middle order way too much to do with right. not enough time to do it? Yes, they did have to face a very good uh, power play bowling attack in the Silicon Valley Strikers. So let's talk a little bit about them. We kind of leapfrogged the Silicon Valley Strikers but let's let's talk about everybody who played this weekend. What do you see with the Silicon Valley strikers right now? Well, Silicon Valley, at least in terms of personnel, look about like what we expected. Um, I'm definitely not worried about their bowling. They were fantastic against San Diego today. Uh, and even the loss uh, to SoCal wasn't because their bowling had a whole lot of trouble. Uh, Srini Raghavan, I mentioned, very economical. 15 runs given up in four overs against SoCal. Uh, and then managed to rebound from two expensive early overs to finish three for 26 against San Diego. Sarab Netravalkar is Sarab Netravalkar, two okay. for 19 in both matches. That's a You can set your watch to that. Yeah, you, um, can. you can bank on that one. <laughs> we're, we're not a betting yeah, show. We're not a betting show, but there's your betting. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. I mean, if I were Vegas, I would set the over at 19. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they had SoCal at 81 for five before that Elmore Ruben Clinton partnership came up. That was okay. The concern we had is that their batting depth got eviscerated over the offseason, particularly by the absence of some of those CPL guys that now have a schedule conflict because of the way that minor league got pushed into August and September. Um, last year, when they would get down a couple wickets, when they lost the likes of Pranay Suri, Unmuk Chand, Jardiwala, uh, et cetera, they had folks like Roshan Primus, Raymond Reefer, so that they could push Gary Graham into that 16th, 17th over, let him play with reckless abandon Absolutely. when he got there. And it was a surreal thing to see Gary Graham into that SoCal game in the ninth over. That is so much earlier than we're accustomed to. Um, and for context, it's only the 10th time in minor league that he'd entered before the end of the 15th over and ended up wow. being only the fifth time he's ever been out before that point. So they, they are very much uh, suffering from a loss of batting depth. Uh, it really came to bite them in that SoCal game because once Graham left, there really wasn't a whole lot there to support Shahan Jayasuria, who had a labored 55 and certainly threatened. You could hear the commentators throughout saying, you know, as long as he's there, we're not comfortable. But right. uh, but but didn't have the support that he was going to need in that one. Um, for me, it makes me wonder if that could be the deciding factor eventually in terms of the last bowler or two that you're keeping in your 11. Um, you know, they were working with Pankaj Kumar Rao as a debutant in minor league uh, over the course of these two games. Uh, didn't see Kulvinder Singh yet. Kulvinder somebody who can, uh, you know, find his way around with the bat. He's had some big knocks in the past. That may end up being something that tips things in favor of including him more frequently in the roster in the roster than the likes of a row to make sure that you've got some extra protection or for him to be the late gun at the end of the uh, of the piece. Right, right. Well, this is fantastic stuff right here, Joe. Um, I, f I mean, it's hard to follow everything that goes on in the league. The West is a very interesting division. So it's great chatting with you. You got the insight here of the nitty gritty of these teams pretty well down. So um, really appreciate this wrap up next week. Let's talk a little bit about next week. We got some teams that didn't play this weekend who are going to premiere next weekend. Mm -hmm. And we got a few teams taking the weekend off. That's right. After uh, doing the hosting duties for the opening weekend. SoCal and San Diego will uh, rest for a little bit. They are both back in action uh, in the final weekend of August, uh, 25th, 26th, 27th. Uh, next week, we've got Seattle Thunderbolts hosting the Silicon Valley Strikers. Uh, that's a rematch of last year's conference title game, although kind of only in name only. Uh, right. There are only about four of the Bolts that are even back and aren't in Texas or Atlanta at this point. Uh, so uh, they do have a couple of interesting players, though, that uh, are into the side. Dilpreet Bajwa and Harsh Talker in particular coming off of uh, man of the match performances uh, in a few games in Canada's global T20 last month. So uh, looking forward to seeing them. The team's a bit of a question mark right now, and we're looking forward to getting some questions answered. Uh, and then down here in the Bay Area, uh, Golden State Grizzlies will be hosting East Bay Blazers in Davis. And those two tend to play absolutely insane games, yes. especially at Arroyo Park. And so uh, that should be my first call of the season. And I am psyched for it. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that one for sure. Make sure the cameras are the camera angles are good and all that stuff. Make sure that everything's taken care of because I'm definitely wanting to watch that game. <laughs> I will I will talk to Bud and I'll let him know Big Brother is watching. <laughs> Excellent. And we'll try to do better here in Morrisville as well. So <laughs> um, you know, in case you want to check us out. But yeah, uh Joe, once again, thanks. You set a really great standard for the correspondence on this on this program this weekend so every you know the other guys check this out watch this video this is great stuff <laughs> here from joe but yeah joe you've added a lot of value to this uh to this program and man i'm so excited about minor league this year it's it's tough because we're coming off of that major league we don't have much turnaround time so it's tough to really be on top of things and this is why you're so valuable especially this season well, and it's so exciting in this Western division to see the rise of a SoCal team. I mean, here I'm, I'm in the Bay Area. Generally speaking, we are just all beat L.A. all the time. But it's nice when there's some doubt in mind. <laughs> and yeah, it feels great. like a, it feels like a really good contest instead of a, a foregone conclusion. Um, you know, for as much as I don't particularly uh, enjoy the Lakers, uh, they, it is a more fun league when they're good and sure. they give you some friction. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, Joe. Orioles go Orioles first place. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, both of us are O's fans, as as everybody should know by now. If you don't, <laughs> you know. But, free uh, but Kevin thanks. Brown. Yeah, free Kevin Brown. My goodness. Gosh, Lord. All right. Good talking to you, Joe. Take care of yourself, Nate.